Loud Esmond here. Yes, I know I'm in an airport. One of those things when travel happens this way and you get stuck and you've got a deadline. And so here is one of the videos this week that you're going to need to do your, well, valuable picking in NFL games. I'm going to be covering two terrible teams here, but I think I've got a solid pick. And by the way, winnersandwinders.com, the website, you want to go there all the time looking for the premium bets, the specials on premium bets. There's always some sort of promotion going on, so keep going back there, checking things out. Like us, follow us, do all that stuff, and uh, communicate with me through the comments. Even if you want to say something snide about me getting a pick wrong, it won't hurt my feelings. I've got alligator skin and the looks for radio, as you can tell. Well, two teams whose seasons are circling the bowl will meet Sunday at the Death Star in the desert off the Strip in Las Vegas. Given what happened to the Death Star at the end of Star Wars and all aboard, they might have thought of a better nickname because life is imitating art this season as the Raiders have imploded. Likewise, the Indianapolis Colts season has ended abruptly with the firing of head coach Frank Reich. The Colts shocked the world by hiring Jeff Saturday, former Colts star offensive lineman, during the Peyton Manning Colts glory days as head coach. Saturday has no head coaching experience of any NFL level, and bizarrely, the Colts owner, Jim Irsay, stated after the hiring that having no experience was actually a good thing. Maybe he's back on the pills. Who knows? Anyway, the move has probably just about everybody in the building polishing up the old resume and getting ready to be let go in January. Their season is flushed. Things got even weirder for the Raiders this week as the team released former first-round pick Jonathan Abram, a popular team player who was playing some safety and lots of special teams, and, and was, by the way, the team's second leading tackler. Then the Raiders put the team's leading tackler, linebacker Divine Diablo, on injured reserve, and then he was joined by tight end Darren Waller and slot receiver Hunter Renfro. Devontae Adams will be available at receiver, but who else will be out there uh, as Aaron Rodgers would put it, is, well, a beautiful mystery. The Raiders might not have a lot of linebackers, period, and we may see a safety at linebacker or someone else at the position, or they may just play a one or two linebacker scheme. In any case, a defense that was one of the worst in the league just got worser. Fortunately for the Raiders, the Colts' offense has been anemic under Matt Ryan, hasn't showed much since the switch to QB Sam Ellinger. RB, running back Jonathan Taylor, is still gimpy, and the offensive line is suspect. Now, the problem for the Colts is they need their running game to work to open up the passing game, and currently, neither is working. Here's some bold predictions. The Raiders' offense will get booed repeatedly at home when they go three and out. The Colts' offense will resemble an NFL offense playing against the Raiders' terrible defense, and this game will be as about as exciting as watching paint dry. I don't like either of these teams at all, but I hate one more, and that's the Raiders. At least the Colts have the inspiration and feel-good vibe from upbeat guy Jeff Saturday in the locker room, and the Raiders have, well, nothing but a bunch of players on injured reserve, and then I forgot there was also a linebacker who retired. The Raiders might win, but neither team's going to light it up. I like the under and the Colts plus the points. Loud Esmond here for Winners and Winers, trying to make you a better, better.